Hey everybody, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program RP0. This is our Twitch recap from uh, last Sunday's live stream, where we were taking another look at our Jasper mission, the uh, Jupiter Atmospheric uh, Science Probe Experiment Return. Um, this is uh, kind of the updated model that I uh, showed you in, what was that, two episodes ago, uh, where I had made some changes after a uh, failure to prototype out something worthwhile on the live stream before. I did make a few changes to it as far as the structure, uh, how the tanks were mounted, and uh, address some of the clipping. And uh, I also made some changes to the DN5. You actually saw this vehicle go up uh, last episode, taking a resupply pod to the moon. Um, this was uh, where I was just kind of generally going over the changes and uh, making sure it was saved into the subassemblies folder where I can easily access it from there. So uh, anyway, we're going to do an all-up launch test, both of the vehicle and a re-entry test uh, for our new Jasper prototype. So uh, I will turn you over to uh, old me. Uh, yeah, one funds equals a uh, $1,000 in... Well, uh, something has exploded. Well, all right then. We're just uh, we're gonna ignore that. SAS is on. Throttle is set to full. The ignition. Our igniters. That's probably what blew up. We're missing some igniters. Lamps off. Uh, 1.35 off the pad, which I guess makes us the fastest DN ever. And we have uh, thrust limited our 172s. Press F3. Yeah. Uh, separation motor collide collided into launch pad. Yeah our igniters and uh, considering we are uh, on the very cusp of 1989 uh, man <laughs> probably uh, what almost double that 400 million dollars for this launch so I guess a uh, Jupiter direct and return that's not too bad <laughs> oh man when is the future gonna start <laughs> All right, we need a gravity turn, because, oh boy, we have accelerations, like all of them. 140 meters per second already. I should have been leaning into this uh, a bit ago. Is it 1965 or 1960 money? I mean, I guess the inflation rate hadn't really kicked up a bunch, so maybe it doesn't make a whole lot of difference. And so, uh, considering we have these 172s thrust limited to almost uh, 50%, yeah, 52%, uh, if this goes as well as I think it should, maybe we should just cut the boosters down to two RD-172s. Slim them out a little bit, it'll save us some construction-y costs. Oh, no, 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 Gimbal! It's gone. Okay. That was me reading chat and not paying attention to what I was doing. Yeah, that went well. Anyway, we're going to uh, speed through this second launch, uh, the revert, uh, because it uh, goes a whole lot smoother than the first, and uh, I needed to save some kind of time uh, somewhere in this rather lengthy episode. Um, so uh, we did adjust the gimbal limit on the uh, RD-172s just to make sure we could have decent control authority as uh, we make our ascent through the atmosphere. It was pretty peppy off the pad, but then again, uh, carrying a 22-ton uh, payload that we plan on flinging to Jupiter is uh, not that much of an accomplishment, I should say. It's really intended, uh, this variant, I should say, uh, is intended more for the heavy resupply pods that both go to Mars and uh, out to the moon, for the time being anyway. But uh, it was nice to put it through its paces and just kind of get a feel for uh, how everything works, uh, although I wish I had gotten a little more flight time with it. I guess that's the uh, benefit of having a very small rocket stable. As you get used to your rockets uh, very quickly and learn to fly them a whole lot better. Uh, we're coming into a new bit of technologies now that are going to uh, make some very rapid changes to a lot of our lift vehicles, uh, improvements, and uh, as well as introduction of a, a new thing or two here or there, uh, namely whatever our big type three rocket is going to be called. But yeah, you know, we'll, we'll leave that to an episode that actually deals with it. So uh, just making sure that we have uh, most of our fuel for RCS locked. It does look like we're going to have to make uh, a little bit of a push. Nope. 
I stand corrected. We make all the way to orbit just on the core stage. I'm about 90% sure. It's been a few days. I'm not sure I, I exactly remember, but uh, I'm pretty sure that's what happened. Yeah, anyway, so the uh, the rocket performs pretty well as can be expected. Uh, a slight uptick in capability from the older DN5 with the mixed booster variant it will be replacing, but we're going to come up on main engine cutoff, so uh, I'm going to turn you over to live or old me live during the broadcast. Ugh. Mm. Steering losses may have been a bit more than I anticipated. <laughs> what would 25 kilopascals do to one's face? I mean, I think uh, if we want a valid comparison, we need to know uh, how many kilopascals one experiences when sticking their head out the window at 60 mile an hour. Because that is a sensation I'm familiar with. All right, uh, yeah, we're not hitting orbit on the core. Uh, quite possibly due to my terrible, terrible launch profile. Well, I don't know. We might be a little closer than I think we are. Let's go ahead and just angle this in. I'm trying to break down the horizon these last little bit. Oh? Oh, really? Hey, would you look at that? We're just going to let this run through. 465 by 173. We did make it to orbit on the core stage. There's staging. RCS to arm. Throttle to zero. And uh, now it's time to deorbit. I'm really curious if it would tear your cheeks open. Somebody please has to tell me what that, that looks like. I mean, not what tearing your cheeks open looks like, but what the key little pascals are like. Spinny course up for the win, indeed. For no real reason other than I accidentally... What the hell? Why did that jump back a whole lot? Anyway, I <laughs> I put the set motors on there for... Uh, and had them angled and never bothered to fix it. Did I ever see the, the movie Mirrors? I did not. <laughs> it got screwed and ran away. Dynamic pressure depends on cross-section shape area, so even when the rocket experiences 25 kPa, our test subject can feel a different cue. Uh, so I need to know the cross-section of one's face. HG3 is active. Ullage, ullage, ullage. Let's bring this... No, not that. You. Very stable. Very good. Ignition. <laughs> We're coming back for you, core stage. No, I, I did not mean that literally. Oh god. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, plenty good enough. Yeah. Stage that off. Now we can probably uh, open this tank up. RCS control. <laughs> Ramming speed. I want to feel the cue that was gallivanting around the universe using his om omnipotent powers to impress people. <laughs> Do you? KSP finally works again. Excellent. New snort of me said, oh god. <laughs> Glad I could be entertaining for for once. That's awesome you got your KSP working again, Brian. Okay, good. And rotational axis is very good now that we have... Uh, Powerful thrusters to move our 22 tons around. Uh, I don't think we'll need any of the other things. We're just going to march prograde uh, smack into the atmosphere. Good. Good times. Let's do this. Kathunk. There's Atmo. Let's uh, tell flight computer to hold prograde. And uh, see how well this thing survives. <laughs> Look what he's snorting.
Luca, how's it going? Welcome, welcome. Thanks for coming by. So let's bring up our heat shield data so we can keep an eye on that. And uh, everything else uh, should be full. We're at the, yeah, this is a full mass test. So uh, here we go. Let's just see if we can't correct that roll so we can keep our angry thrusters to give us uh, pitch authority. And yeah, let's time warp on in. Oi, oi, oi. You sound like you're. Typing out a Bouncing Souls song. Just A-OK -okay in this chat. Oh, there's a deviation that's interesting. Is that because of time warp or because we're, we shouldn't be off balance? Yeah, 3054, 3054, those tanks are even. Nothing else really got changed. Bring that roll back under control. I was thinking TNT. Because <laughs> it's dynamite. Or is that what you were snorting? Does it know where it is? <laughs> uh, it might know where it isn't. Oreo dust. Uh oh. Within reason. <laughs> well, it, it knows where it was, and uh, it knows where it isn't. Uh, this thing's probably going to have lots of error based on how good a job at holding. Oh, I guess these are firing almost right through the center of mass, so they're not going to help us with our yaw control. Or pitch control. Probably, nope. They're not helping with anything other than hull hitch, which they don't need to be. That's excellent. I guess we have to de-angle those thrusters. So where is my notepad and my pen? I found a Sharpie. That'll work well. D angle thrusters in Sharpie. It subtracts where it isn't from where it was or where it was from where it isn't. Whichever is greater. <laughs> Great. Luke, you've been here five minutes and look what you've done already. Tennis and heat shield early. You need to differentiate. <laughs> yeah, so maybe replace these thrusters up here with these big angry thrusters so that they can help us with what we need them to help us with. That's an option. <laughs> Watching KSP stream at 121 Monday is called deviation. <laughs> oh yeah, the rest of our rocket. I forgot that that would be following us in. Well, not the core stage. <laughs> Just the HD3 upper. Oh, where is it? Yeah, we may have lost it all already. Now that blew up early. All right, let's. We have changes to be made. All right, time. You know you need to do calculus mid flight. It's already too late. Ugh, of course, I miss all the explosions. Many apologies, SimG. All right, are we uh, uh, ablating yet? Cause uh, we're coming in pretty spicy. There it is. Or what's left of it. 
Maybe that's the core? Nope. <laughs> we don't know what that is. It's too close to bring up a reticle. Oh, hello. Oh, those are struts. Yep, ablative struts connected to the heat shield. Eject the hamsters for science. Uh, we need them for the mass. We need them for nothing other than mass simulators at this moment. We could eject the hamsters, though. I wonder how well that would go. Oh, I can't decide if it's a good idea or not. Need to go see you. Right on, Crying. Thank you for stopping by. We'll see you again real soon. <laughs> no, not the hamsters, you monster. <laughs> Alright, we'll keep the hamsters this time. All right, things are getting spicy. A blader is ablating. Everything not struts attached to said uh, heat shield are holding out pretty good. Mm, two G's. Oh. That went as well as could be expected. Procedural burned up from overheating. So I really wonder which procedural tank that was that burned up due to overheating. Procedural payload fairing base. Oh, maybe that's the HD3 stage. So, wow, yeah. And that's the bit really that uh, kind of amazed me because I did not have that problem in initial testing. But uh, very first step is to uh, clear the rocket uh, the way we want it. Um, we're basically going to remove the thrust limiters um, because this will be using for heavy cargo. And we're going to uh, enable the gimbals. And then we're going to set up a very quick uh, two engine variant of this for smaller payloads uh, such as this one where we don't really need... Uh, as much thrust to get off the launch pad. Our TWR is a, a little better and uh, we can afford to um, be a little cheap. I know that RT-172s are not exactly an expensive engine, but um, you know, with better variation comes, I don't know, something. Uh, it uh, stands to benefit us to have a two engine variant of these boosters. We'll probably reduce that uh, flare on the uh, engine mount taper there. We're just going to make sure that uh, all the rest of our things are matched up appropriately. We've got good runtime on the uh, RS 25s. We'll reduce that flare, as I was mentioning earlier, and uh, make sure the engines aren't clipping into one another. That would be a good quality of life improvement we can make. And then uh, get this thing cleared and uh, saved into the sub-assemblies menu at some point. I think that's actually all the checking over I really need to do. We're just going to try to pull a little trick here to get the uh, Delta V to show the difference between boosters on and boosters off. Or rather, how much DV we'll get before booster step and then after. Uh, but for some reason, that little trick doesn't really work for me. So we're just going to save it in the subassemblies menu. I will go back uh, off camera and uh, put that thing through its paces a few times. The uh, primary objective right now is to figure out why the hell this thing exploded or why it spun around and exploded. So the first answer is to give ourselves a little extra torque by moving the beefy thrusters to the top where they will have a, uh, a little bit of a better angle. They're further from the center of mass. So uh, maybe they can provide us with a little more authority as far as keeping the heat shield bit uh, pointed into the air, which is what we needed to do most. Uh, a double check of a uh, few other things, maybe declip the heat shield away from the tanks, thinking that maybe that caused an explosion, as well as sizing it up uh, just a touch. Uh, I think we're now up to about 23 tons, but uh, we'll take this outside, just drop it in orbit and do a very quick simulation. So uh, here's old me. Send crew first to check this narrow air capture window. Absolutely. We'll get right on that. Uh, all right. SAS is on. RCS is on. I do not really need throttle. Let's 
uh, angle ourselves into retrograde and uh, try this deorbit thing again. And uh, yeah, we can we can mine the gap, mighty big gap. Oh, how do I enable that data window that shows me? <laughs> Love the origami, but it's a cursed son of a Cessna. <laughs> <laughs> fair fair assessment all right uh, and staging is in the proper order for mission actual ignition there we go that's holding pretty true which tanks are we draining these obviously should have locked them too late now your Jupiter entry probe pulled around 300 G's because this periapsis was lower a bit when you jettisoned it. Ouch. <laughs> Alright, we're going to go for a negative periapsis on this approach also. We want to put as much stress on this thing as we can. There we go. That should be good enough. Alright, and let's pump all, all as much fuel as we can forward. I don't know if we'll even be able to top this off. Out, out. Yeah, good enough. And lock these tanks closed. Keep the mass as close to the heat shield as we can. And now we'll get our shelves uh, turned around to prograde. I think you're supposed to offset the part it's attached to, not the shield from the part. Uh, or, yeah, we're supposed to have a non-procedural part in between the two. Hmm. Well, if this fails, because I got this to work once on a much milder uh, re-entry profile, I think uh, descending into a 50 kilometer periapsis, roughly, what would be a standard deorbit from a uh, low Earth orbit kind of thing. Uh, this is much more spicy. Okay, good. And those thrusters are, in fact, helping with pitch, even better. Oh, what's our power consumption look like? Oh, we have a drain. Dang it. And we don't even have our comms activated. So we're going to need another RTG. Let's write that down. Uh, RTG. So what if we put an RTG in between the heat shield and the procedural part and it could harness the heat from the heat shield to generate electricity? That's a legit idea, right? Veos! <laughs> Damn it, no! <laughs> Veos, welcome. I'm really glad to see you, buddy. How's it going? Uh, <laughs> it's already messed up. <laughs> You're big dumb. You killed Ned and Kerbin because you forgot to put oxygen inside his capsule. Oh. Yeah, there's some folks at OSHA who are going to have a, a talk with you. <laughs> <laughs> Just in time for the fight. I feel like if it doesn't blow up now, we're... something has gone horribly awry. <laughs> Praise the Lord of Mass Destruction. <laughs> Why am I in physics warp? We do not need to be in physics warp. We can standard warp until we uh, hit something resembling air and then re angle. And I'm coming into this, I really thought, oh, we're just going to do a quick launch, a second deorbit test after I made some changes. Everything's going to go swimmingly, and we're going to move on and do other stuff. And there's Thunk Atmo. Let's bring our angle down. <laughs> Mass isn't destroyed, it's just converted to energy. Why can't humans photosynthesize? Stunning questions. Heard any news on when RP-1 will be a thing we can all get our hands on? Uh, Charlie Pryor, I think RP-1 has actually re uh, re hit full release for KSB version uh, 1.3.1. So uh, it is, in fact, all a thing. Well, that's really good to hear, Simji. I'm glad I could help drag you back into this uh, 
this mess of a KSP life. You're doing you're starting your new job Monday. Lots of OT, no life, but the money will be good. Oh, that's awesome, dude. Uh what new job? <laughs> oh yeah, say so, uh RP one or realism overhaul in general is always, always, always gonna be like four versions behind. But I think they're going to skip 1.4 and maybe even 1.5 and just do a straight uh, version update to 1.6. But that will probably be available by around KSB 1.9. I hope your 36-year-old son will see RSS RP2 KSB 1.6.1. Yeah, it sounds just about accurate. It's going to be a septic tank pumper. It's a shitty job. Somebody's got to do it. Wah, wah, wah. I'll say, why bother with 1.45 if they're just going to jump straight to 1.6? Rapid release cycle. Yeah, the rapid release cycle of KSP is really... Oh yeah, 1.5 is terrible, but I'm saying, why even build for 1.4 if you're just going to jump to 1.6? Working on storm drains. That's all I can tell you. I already know too much. <laughs> Shh. All right, on Veos. I'm I'm glad you're going to be out there making some good money. It's good to hear. Uh, those people are asking for 1.4 compatibility all the time. I mean, sure. <laughs> uh, I just giggle in 1.1.3. <laughs> Initially, they also want to do a mint release for 1.45. Yeah. He's secretly working with the Ninja Turtles. <laughs> <laughs> Why not make an entire spear in the game just for RPO or RO RP1? Uh, I mean, I don't, I don't know what is happening with your keyboard, but I think I agree with you. Why not take uh, the Unity engine and make a standalone? executable oh, I I would agree that why not just make a RSS stand you'd pay for it uh, indeed yes it would cost money uh, I really hope it would cost money because anybody who takes on a project like that absolutely deserves to make some flippin money The master will not be pleased, Wookie. <laughs> All right, we're in Atmo, and uh, we can physics warp. Uh, we'll come out of physics warp when we pop our struts off. $35. I'd pay for it. Now, what's what's wrong with 1.2.2? Uh, what's wrong with 1.1.3? They were bringing the mod that allows for axis tilt and make RSS so much better. I agreed. Make the entire solar system tilted because Earth has to be upright. <laughs> it yeah. It it was real weird looking at it for like the first month or two playing. Now I just I don't know. I guess I don't see it anymore. Like that little chip in the windshield that you have to look right through all the time until suddenly you just never notice it again. Agreed, SimG. Mod for KSP 1.6, so 1.6 RSS might get proper axial tilts. There's a chift window in Mark II plane cabin. There is? I did not know that. All right, and let's uh, remember that when this fails, we need to check our G loading also, just uh, to be sure. You really hope that the source code for KSP will release in one day or another. All right, there's our. Whoa! Ah, oh, jeez, Veos. <laughs> Toe 
Heavy Shire. <laughs> Rage quit Alt F4. <laughs> ah, I hit Escape. I meant to hit F3. Although I think the game gave out on us. <sighs> All right. Strut connector burned up. And procedural. It looked we spun ninety degrees and then everything went cattywampus. All right. So uh, turns out that didn't work either. So uh, we will need to make a few other changes while I kind of try to figure out why the hell this thing is going all caddy wampus on us. Um, doesn't look like anything should be clipping, but I think we need some kind of spacer uh, in here. Although I wasn't sure if this was the time when I made that change or if that comes uh, later on, but we'll get our uh, decoupler back in there. And then, yeah, we will put in a uh, shielded tank here. We'll put a little fuel in it so it can act as ballast, although we will probably launch with it empty or close to empty. And then uh, while we are pulling our arrow capture maneuver, we can uh, pump fuel into it to uh, keep our center of mass as close to the heat shield as we can. Uh, we'll give it some very powerful thrusters so that we can hopefully use that as uh, control authority. And then we'll take it outside for a test run. Boink. There we go. In the orbits, uh, SAS on, RCS on. First things first, let's pump a bunch of fuel forward. In, in, and get ourselves angled to retrograde while we're at it. I forgot to configure those thrusters for air <laughs> Uh, so we've got these dumb, useless thrusters that are, I mean, literally dumb. They're not going to do anything. They're just going to sit there and look pretty. Because reasons. Staging. Engine. Throttle up. Well, let's just see if having that thing there helps reduce the explodey bits. Let's see if that doesn't help our cause at all. The HSP field of resource in the KSP wiki states specific heat. How much energy in joules per kelvin needed to raise the temperature of one kilogram of resource by one degree kelvin? High numbers make it great as a thermal control substance. Oh, that's interesting. The stock KSP has, like, what? Ore, monoprop, liquid fuel, oxidizer. And that's it. Right? So there's not a whole lot that can be, uh... There aren't a lot of substances that can be used for these sorts of things. Lock that tank. That's all ballast now. That's really interesting. All right, let's get this moving swiftly along. Let's try to blow up some more stuff. I overestimated the angle by, or underestimated the angle by a little bit. All right, flight computer. Hold prograde, please, and thank you. We don't need you. We do need you, although I don't know why. We're overheating things well before we run out of a blader. What altitude were we at when things exploded last time? About 70-something? Does anybody remember? I really should have written that part down, I suppose. RTGs. I need to add more RTGs. Sucks. That's going to throw off absolutely everything. Oh! Oh! There was an idea, a suggestion from the chat last time. Why not spin stabilize on re-entry? Uh, we need much more authority on our roll axis if we're going to give that a try. 
but that would that would keep us from fishtailing. I hope. I don't know. Chad, is that a really dumb idea? Should we spin ourselves? Seventy-three kilometers, something like that. Okay, so I'm just gonna get us out of uh, time warp or physics warp at about eighty, eighty something. <laughs> Fingers on the keys, waiting for things to go sideways again. I mean, literally, figuratively, whichever. Pretty sure KSP does care about the contents of the tank as far as specific heat. Usually the extra mass causes hotter re-entry to begin with, so it's hard to come out ahead. Little organism is demanding attention. Uh, probably, but there are two other adults who are, have been tasked with exactly that. So she's probably just being fussy about dinner time. All right. In 80 kilometers, bring it out of physics warp, and now, now we wait. The GPHS RTGs have better power per kilogram ratio than the megawatt you're currently using. Oh, awesome. Yeah, we should probably figure out a way to integrate those without it looking absolutely stupid. So we could probably get, whereas I was thinking of taking... Our current RTG count from two to three. Oh, yep. Yeah. That should be our struts overheating. Excellent. That's a given. Because they are attached directly to the heat shield. They're absorbing some of that saturated heat. Pop. 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 Oh, when they pop, they're kind of giving a little kick, and I'm wondering if that's what spun us around last time. Because we should be fairly neutral behind this heat shield. At least we were in the one test that I didn't do live on Twitch. The one that worked. Although we are coming in a little bit more aggressively this time. What about strutting them into the tank instead of the shield? Yeah, if we end up keeping this tank, that is very likely what we will do. Oh, what do our controls look like they're doing? They're holding some some yaw and some pitch authority all in one direction, which is very interesting. So we should not be off balance. So I'm wondering what is causing it to deviate like that. One that works, sure. By the way, who knows, do near future reactors have realistic RO configs? Ah, uh, that is a very good question. I do not know. Alright, hands off the keyboard. We're just letting autopilot uh, screw this up for us. Some interesting deviation. Yaw is pegged out. Pitch is about to be. So if we try to roll... Does it reduce that input on either of those axes? Yeah, yaw is trying to push us down. I'm wondering if... Uh, FAR is calculating something on that comms dish that's making it wonky, but... Oh, there we go. We lost a tank, and yeah, now we're way off balance. Is that tank still attached? 
Well, this is interesting. Oh, this is very interesting indeed. <laughs> I'm I'm not sure that tank is attached at all. Uh, yeah, I'm very confident it, it is not. Oh, come on, get get that face back into the wind. What is going on? <laughs> it is still attached. <laughs> See, I told you it would work. What the hell happened? Struck connector, struck connector, struck connector. Yeah, the tank exploded due to overheating. It is somehow getting saturated heat through that heat shield. And then the RCS uh, failed due to aerodynamic stresses. Alright, so how many thrusters did we lose? It's nothing on this side. Everything that's attached to things that are attached are still to appear to be attached. Uh, this connection joint, on the other hand... That thing is bobbling around like crazy. So I think we may need to uh, reconnect that instead of uh, on the side, like through the node or whatnot. This is go approved. Your tank. <laughs> I think you might need to lower your tank profile. Yep. Could, uh, could be. <laughs> Uh, maybe it's loose. The mods that add silence in space. It could be interesting. It's moving forwards due to the G load, like your eyeballs when you slam on the brakes. Mm hmm. Weight heating, plasma trail behind the craft could also be responsible for the heating, yes. Considering strutting the rear of the tanks to the high pressure tank above it. Like, uh,. Are you, Wookie, are you talking about to the heat shield tank or to the high pressure engine tank? Yeah, either of those could work. All right, I, I think we're revert to the VAB because something on here is definitely not going to the tank that the engine is on. Okay. Hey, baby steps, baby steps. That worked uh, better than the previous one. So really, we just need to uh, rigidify the tanks. Uh, to something that probably won't explode. So uh, we're going to relocate a few things. I think we do have the power draw issue to attend to, but uh, we're going to attach these tanks directly onto these mounts instead of uh, radially attaching them or attaching them through the, um, the side of the tank. Uh, this should give us a stronger connection node, which will hopefully provide much better uh, stability for everything and then of course we need to uh, reattach our hamsters and get them angled so that they're not running into things and then of course struts if we can really pin those tanks down to the uh, body of the spacecraft I think it will benefit us and we'll also run these struts to our shielded uh, insulator tank here and uh, hope that that's enough to keep them from exploding uh, we are going to replace the RTGs with these bigger units that we have unlocked uh, more recently. Uh, right now we just need to see if they will provide uh, adequate power to run the whole thing without uh, anything further, but I don't think that is going to be their final location, but that's not what we're testing right now. Right now we need to do a drop test. So uh, back over to old me. Into the orbits. Alright, SAS, RCS. Just staging. Still a very nimble little bugger. Good. Oh yeah, those added thrusters up there are excellent at angling things. Stage ignition. Let's just uh, burn off those RTG hinges, because, you know, why not? You should just boop from being on a launch pad to being in orbit. Yeah. Wouldn't that be awesome? It is, uh, it has a much lower requirement for pretties. How's it going, public servant? 
Uh, we are doing some testing for something that we are going to throw at Jupiter and uh, try to test out the viability of aero capture. But uh, first, we need to find stability. <laughs> uh, because if it uh, won't stay stable during a reentry here in Earth's atmosphere, it, chance, it has zero chance of surviving an aero capture maneuver at Jupiter. All right, so there's that. Let's drain our butt fuel. No, not. Mm. All right, so what do we got here? Through the slightly instantaneous acceleration might cause issues with things like the bonds between some aquatic particles in your body. I, you know, a very, very slight problem there, but uh, I'm sure we can figure it out eventually. So there's that. He's sober today. Maybe that's the reason. It could, it, it certainly uh, might be a contributing factor as to why we're getting much less done than normal. Although really most everything we've built on a live stream has had some fatal flaw somewhere all right and lock this fuel so that we can use it as an anchor and uh let's go to town uh, i should have been at a much better angle than that yep only 25 degrees that's not too terrible oh with that tank lock those thrusters don't fire and we really want those thrusters to fire how about uh, enable crossfeed? Still not firing. That's interesting. All right, computer hold prograde. Let's open up this tank. Fine. Be that way. And we'll time warp to the 80 kilometer moment and see how things go. Just everything built on a live stream got an awesome name, <laughs> except for this. Because I wrote down what I wanted to do, and I said, that's really close to a name, like an actual one. Maybe we should just try for that. Although, I should probably stick to the uh, normal routine and get suggestions from the chat on YouTube, or on the comment section in YouTube, when it comes time for these sorts of things. Alright. So, I really hope this works, because this is probably going to be the last test I have time for today. I always think of the front shield layout as like Superman flying through the atmosphere, hypersonic like. <laughs> Properly Ostrom. Astrochronoms. Astrochronoms are okay to bypass mob naming. <laughs> I wouldn't, I'm not sure if Jasper qualifies as properly awesome, but I guess we can take votes on that too. <laughs> we will bypass the mob naming by vote from the mob. Yes, absolutely. Oh, I want my heat shield data available. You can go away and you can go away because fuel levels ain't that important. 98 kilometers and falling. Hope to see the series going in 2025 at least. At least. Easily. Jasper is significantly more awesome and not cringy compared to the shit Cyrus Rex stands for. <laughs> the worst freaking backronym in the history of space exploration. Shots fired. Oh no, Scorpio. Uh, SimG absolutely mean, uh, means in real time. Like, the actual year 2025. 83 kilometers, let's come out of physics warp. And just for our roll. Oh yeah, we should have upped those, the authority on those roll controlling thrusters by making them bigger thrusters. And uh, let's see how many structural bonds we can break today. Isn't there a song about the year 2125? Maybe. I'm not entirely sure. I know a song about 1999 that we're not going to sing. 
And I know a song about uh, 10,000 BC that we're also not going to sing, but for two entirely different reasons. Been here since August 2016. Is all the chances to reach 2025 considering this dedication? I mean, maybe. I will certainly try. 2525, actually. Yeah, I don't know that one either. All right, 73 kilometers. This is where we have um, flipped out and lost stuff before. But I guess uh, moving the struts to the shielded uh, tank that we still did not assign a tank type, that was stupid. It doesn't really seem to care. Well, that's what I'm trying to click. In. Procedural shielded. Nothing else matters. So if he lands on Titan by that time, crude. No promises. Although, uh... Maybe we'll try. <laughs> Chance of success, however, yeah, you know, meh. Eh. Why well, would you look at this? I'd say you're in Evans in 1969. Ah. Yeah, I don't think I know that one. Okay, now we have some overheat warnings on some struts. Pop. I'm surprised that that little strut popping is enough to uh, throw off our balance. Look at the, uh, how our yaw deviated a little bit when that thing went. Now, let's see if it corrects when this one goes. It did. That is really interesting. So yeah, if you do that during physics warp, of course it'll spin you around. What's the ablative look like? We got our uh, heat shield info pulled up right down here. We have lost uh, quite a bit of ablator. I think the ratio of ablator lost to charred ablator that remains on the heat shield is like uh, 2 or 3 to 1. Physics works and I'm still alive. <laughs> Jasper Lua in 1989. <laughs> Back when guitarists held acoustic guitars practically up to their chins. <laughs> well, our uh, our struts are doing better. Our tanks have not... Uh, man, but they are really clipped into that. We need to reduce that the angle on that tank to avoid the clipping. So I'm worried as to what will happen when things uh, are separated. If that might cost us a fuel tank. It's empty. Can't tell. Wait, what? It charter bladers on the bottom, the bladers up top. Am I uh, showing you the wrong thing, Deus? Oh, he meant the the fuel tanks. Need to send three of these to Jupiter at least. One to go too high, one to go too low, and one to get it just right. Jasper and the Goldilocks. All right. So, uh, wow, we we hit some G loading there. We're still decelerating at like six G. And yeah, blader next to nothing. Reentry intestine intensifies. <laughs> I would like to be able to separate this heat shield, maybe, and uh, see if it takes the tanks out with it when it goes. But hey, look at that! We had a success! Uh, a non explody success. Intestines. <laughs> Reentry intensifies. Intestinifies. In Intensified, intensifies. Some days I actually know how to read. <laughs> hamsters. All right, we'll deploy the hamsters. Really? Is that what we're doing today? Boink. <laughs> <laughs> they 
The hamsters are holding on tight for dear life. I'm flopping this, yeah, I was flopping this thing around on purpose. I was trying to see if maybe I could flip it around so we can safely jettison the primary heat shield. Now we're just going to try to shake off the hamsters. There they go. See you guys later. Bye bye. But I don't think we're getting that heat shield off. Oh, I have an idea. Let's break all the rules. Let's see if that doesn't get us uh, turned around at the very least. Looks like they just need shoots. They would here. Uh, their job is to... Uh, after this has captured into Jupiter orbit, we'll make another pass. We will jettison the hamsters, which, god, now that name's going to stick, and I feel really bad. We're going to jettison hamsters that are designed to dive into Jupiter's atmosphere and go deeper than this thing, and uh, collect more atmospheric data, and then burn up and die. That parachute's probably set too low. Boink. That went exactly as well as could be expected. Ham one, ham two. It won't even burn up and die. The fur acts like it'll play her. Oh god, Siv G. <laughs> and finally. A fully successful test. So now it's just a matter of uh, tri uh, trim and polish is the word I was looking for. Uh, we're basically going to uh, paint our insulator tank and uh, we're going to figure out a better solution for mounting these RTGs as well as maybe uh, mounting those hamsters uh, in a different place. Uh, I Dang it, that name's going to stick now. You know, atmospheric drop probes sounds a lot nicer but they just keep getting called hamsters in the live streams. Uh, I made a joke once, and uh, here it is, stuck forever. So anyway, I'm not going to make you watch the uh, rest of me basically just uh, trying to reposition things uh, ever so slightly, but uh, we do eventually come up with a uh, solution that works both in uh, retracted and deployed terms, which is uh, a pretty good thing, and that also doesn't put the RTGs in the plume of the engine, which really just, uh, that seems like a pretty terrible idea. Yeah, we can we can do something like this and then put the hamsters down here. When they deploy, we probably won't have our engine running anyway. And uh, they've got a little bit of Delta V on board so that they can get themselves uh, clear and away. And we'll just uh, move these RTGs up and out of the way a little bit. Oh, hey, look at that. I accidentally did make you watch the whole thing because I got uh, distracted with all the talking. Anyway, this has been cleared to launch. We have attached it to a launch vehicle, and it will be going out on our very next Jupiter window, which is like 180-some-odd days away. It was closer to 300 when this uh, episode was recorded, but uh, after this was recorded before the last moon mission thing, and I did do some uh, science farming, so that happened too. Anyway, uh, there it is being made it to the launch vehicle and the fairing being painted and being added to the build list. So uh, that's going to do it for this episode, everyone. Thank you so much for hanging out. I really do appreciate it. And uh, I will see all of you in the next one. So until then, see you later.